Greenland, despite its name, is 80% ice, or at least it used to be. Today, its ice cap is melting three times faster than it was just five years ago. Researchers say it's tied to climate change. In fact, in some parts of Greenland, temperatures have risen more than five degrees Fahrenheit in two decades. Now, three adventurers have launched an expedition to cross Greenland's ice cap on kite skis. Probably gonna fall on my head. <sighs> Funded in part by a National Geographic Young Explorers grant, the team is made up of Sarah McNair Landry. Day two of expedition, and we're still hauling our luggage up the skelly. Her older brother, Eric, and their friend, Curtis Jones. Their goal is to encourage young people to get active and care about the planet. It's a youth-led expedition. I'm 21, Eric's 22, to kind of go in and pass the message on to other youth that, you know, everything's possible. After four days of hiking, just to get to the ice cap, the weather refuses to cooperate. We're just waiting for good winds and we can kite. Unfortunately, it's been all headwinds, or like today, there's not a single breath of wind in the air. They're forced to cross country ski, hauling their heavy gear behind them on sleds. When the wind finally arrives, it arrives in force. But for these kite skiers, too much breeze is a bad thing. Winds are picking up, it's getting kind of crazy. As you can see, I can barely stand up, a bit of a lightweight. It's about 47, gusting to about 56. It's pretty strong winds. We've decided that uh, it's probably day over for today. As they work their way north, the winds gradually improve, and the team finds their rhythm. With their kites flying, they can cover more than 100 miles a day. So they kite. And kite. And kite some more, across a seemingly endless field of ice and snow. As they near the final days of their journey, they decide to see just how far they can go in a single day. After nearly 24 hours of non-stop kiting, the team is exhausted. How's your day, Eric? I'm gonna take my boots off because my feet are uh, destroyed. I'll put these nice down booties on. Sarah checks their distance on the GPS. 412, see that? 412 kilometers. Destroyed it. It's good. That works out to 256 miles, or about the distance from Washington, D.C. to New York City. It's a personal best for all of them and the feat only achieved by a handful of other kite skiers. To celebrate, they take a well-deserved break. And where better to relax than in an open-air living room, fully furnished with a snow couch, snow coffee table, and even a snow television. In the end, they reach the northwestern edge of the ice cap, right on schedule. They've traveled 1,400 miles in 45 days, with no injuries, incidents, or delays. We also accomplished some of the unwritten goals that should be with every expedition. We stayed together as a team. We're on talking terms at the end of the, the trip. We're great friends at the end of the trip. And we had fun on the trip. In other words, a flawless expedition on an ice cap with an uncertain future. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs. Taking science and exploration into the new millennium.
For the best subscription offers to any National Geographic magazine, log on to nationalgeographic.com slash magazines.